Varsha Agarwal and welcome to Great Lakes. Today we have with us one of the most successful governors of RBI. Please welcome Mr. Y.V. Reddy. Welcome, welcome sir to Great Lakes. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We did have a very insightful session with you. However, I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the U.S. deficit along with that, the U.S. financial crisis. So what is your take on the, on the scenario right now in U.S.? Uh, First, the, you, the crisis really started, as you know, in 2008. There was a collapse of the uh, financial sector, and um, then it was saved by the government by incurring huge debt. Uh, that's what happened. Uh, there was an impression that there was a recovery, uh, not full, but reasonable recovery. In this downgrading, I think it became very clear from a macroeconomic point of view that the recovery was fragile was not strong, was incipient. So that is the reality check. You can question whether the SNP did the right thing, wrong thing, whether it is technically correct, not technically correct. That is not the important thing. Earlier, in 2008, people did not know that there was a financial sector problem. So it's a sort of a revelation that there is a huge financial sector problem in the country, which is the top rate country, and in the financial sector model, which was considered the model for others. That's a revelation. Now, there is a recognition of the reality which you forgot. So it's a wake-up call to United States that they have to do something about the burden that the government has taken by bailing out the financial sector. The government has to do something. Somebody has to pay a price for that. Who has to pay a price? The fiscal is not prepared to pay a price. That was the standard post point. And the rest of the world also thought that the USA is doing well. So a wake-up call to USA about its position it's a wake-up call to the rest of the world. Whether formally you agree with the rating or not is immaterial. So that is the real issue now for the USA to handle. So uh, coming from your rich experience of being in this sector for so long, what do you think should uh, be adopted? What kind of policies should be adopted in US for them to emerge uh, you know, into a growing uh, you know, economy considering they have faced a lot of setbacks? Let me first start with a somewhat general statement, and then I'll give us what I think is specific. General statement is that if you recall in 2008, when the financial sector was uh, collapsing, every unconventional measure was taken to save the financial sector. You bought paper which was worthless. You gave money to institutions which are insolvent. It was saved. And every conceivable method, some open, some not open, were taken to save the financial sector. No financial sector has been saved. Unemployment is still very high. The economy is not recovering. Why are we not thinking of unconventional measures when it comes to people, when it comes to poor people, when it comes to employment, when it comes to output? That's the first question I want to ask. Second, for those who think that fiscal deficit or debt uh, ceiling was a problem, and therefore uh, there is some fundamental problem. No, there is no fundamental problem in the sense that you can still have the same deficit, but you can kickstart the economy. In, uh, in USA, financial sector was in problem. It was saved, but now they are making a lot of profits, huge bonuses. You take corporate sector, corporate sector is rich with cash. The American companies are very rich with cash. It's only the households who are in problems. So it is possible to have the same fiscal deficit. It is possible to have this subject to same debt ceiling, but you must have tax more and you must spend more. You must tax those who have money and spend money and give money to those who don't have money. That type of measure is correct technical solution. Some people call it Keynesianism, some people, but it has nothing to do with the debt ceiling. So in some sense, it's a political economy problem. But the way it is going, Italy is spilling over into economic crisis. What was a financial crisis? Has spilled over as economic crisis in the last two years. People did not recognize. It is spilling over to political crisis now. It will spill over to economic crisis. It is the same in Middle East. It is same in London. It is same in Greece. It is same in the United States. It's far more serious than a simple credit rating, an unnecessary credit rating problem. It may be unnecessary. It may be ridiculous. But it's a wake-up call to inherent problems. Thank you. Lecture there, yeah. Right, <laughs> Simple question. Uh, last question. Uh, what would be your suggestion to the U.S. for recovery back after the setback of their credit rating being reduced from AA plus to AAA? You see, the, the, as I said, the recovery 
the, 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 in some ways, first let us talk the global position, then let us talk the domestic yeah. position. See, there is an impression that because there is a credit uh, downgrade credit rating, the US dollar reserve currency, what will happen? See, whenever you uh, assess a country and its real rating, real rating, not the rating that is given by the credit rating agency, the real rating, that depends not only in absolute position, but relative position also. That is, in absolute way, if you see USA of five years back, USA was riding high, high growth, high employment, everything is great. Eh? So USA, relative, it, uh, absolute position has fallen. But who are the economies close, close to USA? It is Euro, it is Japan. What is Euro area? It is also in trouble. Japan, it's also in trouble. China, you cannot take a capital so easily into China. So what I'm saying is if you are in charge of allocating capital, as between different countries, and if you are in charge of allocating uh, your uh, investments along different countries, different users, you will see the relative position of countries. And the relative position has not changed against USA. It, it continues to be relatively at the top and pretty much at the top. But the whole problem is the top as well as everybody else is going down, which will affect the people. For allocation of capital, you still don't have much of a choice. Even central banks which are holding huge dollar reserves have no choice. They may have to keep sitting on it. Uh, finally, what is your last message uh, to Great Lakes students? Yeah, I think uh, from whatever I could see in the last couple of uh, hours, uh, it's a great institution and uh, these uh, students seem to be very active, definitely very active, uh, inquisitive, intelligent, smart, so continue to be great and become greater. Thank you, sir. Thank you.